The examples that I give you in this video are for illustration purposes only. Understand that each of the layouts that I give you have more than one way the situation could be handled. I'm giving you an example of the way I handle the situation. And I win a lot of eight ball games. So enjoy the video. This is the easiest of the bunch. We are on the solid balls, as we will be with every example. Our one ball is being blocked by the nine. Our opponent feels he owns that pocket. We are going to go there and knock his nine in the pocket, and I understand some of you play games in certain parts of the world where you can't make your opponent's ball. Uh, change the rules, that's a really stupid rule. Anyway, in the meantime, we can do it in most of the world where you're allowed to make your opponent's ball, which is what we're gonna do in a lot of these examples. So what do we do here? We've got the three sitting in front of the pocket these two are makeable, even the two ball is makeable, and I'll tell you what all the intermediate players are doing. They're shooting seven, two, four, they're going back and forth here, and this is your shot. This is your number one shot. Why? Because it leads directly to that pocket. Everybody watching this video has at some point shot a ball in the side pocket, scratched in that corner pocket. Why not use it to your advantage? This is what I call America's favorite scratch shot. Even in Switzerland, guys are saying to other guys, this is what Brian calls America's favorite scratch shot. Yes, it's true, I've seen the video. So, here we are. We're going to play the three, let our cue ball just run down. Actually, I'm gonna put a little top on it to make sure. We can hit this nine full, we can hit our one ball into the nine. Anything that gets that nine out of our way is a win. And we're doing it now on our first shot. Instead of messing with these balls, because if we don't make it, we want these balls on the table so that we have another crack at it. That's why you take care of your problems early. So here we go. We just shoot the, the three ball in, just a little bit of top. The one knocks the nine in, we can run out from here. That is the easiest that you're going to see and it shows up in all your games. Now that you've seen it, you're gonna see it on league night next time you play, I bet you. You're gonna... Here's the situation. We're on the solids. The eight ball is being blocked this time. Treat the eight ball like it is your ball at all times. If the eight ball is being blocked, we are being blocked. You have to creatively think about what am I going to do about that? Not I'm going to play the three, the four, the one, the six, the seven, and then I'm gonna look at that eight like I'm crazy and try to figure out what I'm gonna do with it. Fix it now. This is why some players run out and some don't. You wonder why you're not running racks. It's because we have balls that are blocking pockets that you, need, you never fixed. And you end up, as I like to say, scooping them up with the rack, scooping your balls up with the rack because your opponent had an easy shot because he's gonna make a two for one here. I'm gonna show you later. He's gonna make the nine and the 12, he owns that pocket right now. So just knowing all the individual shots and in pool does not get you out. You have to know what to do with those shots. So let's take a look. Here you are, the 12 is blocking the pocket. We wanna clear that out. We don't have America's favorite scratch shot here. What if we played the seven in that corner, the tangent line takes us over there and plays the 12? But you don't want to take that shot because it's a low percentage shot. So what do you do? You sacrifice one of your insurance shots. In this case, it should be the one for reasons I'll get to in a second. We play a little bit of draw here to give ourselves an easier shot now on the seven ball. And now we can shoot the seven in, make the 12, and we should be out. Just like that. Now, why did I pick this shot as opposed to this shot to get on the seven? Because both of them would have gotten me there. Because this ball was past the pocket. And look where my cue ball is. Now I have this as an insurance shot, this as an insurance shot, but that was not going to do me any good because it didn't have a natural line to the side pocket, which is where I wanted to play it. So given the choice, that's why I played that ball. So here's an interesting situation. The 12 is blocking the pocket. We want to play our seven ball there, hopefully. We don't have a line on anything that leads to breaking up that 12. 
But if you look at the table carefully, you see that one of his clusters leads straight down, comes off the rail a little bit, I think, and then hits our seven ball, which should go into his ball. And even if it doesn't, it frees up our seven. We don't have to get his ball out of the way. We need to get a ball out of the way, whether it's our seven or his 12. So if we can get this angle on the four, send his cluster down there to do the dirty work for us because the six doesn't get us there and the three doesn't get us there, we're probably going to be out. So how do we do that? If we get our cue ball down here on this side of the four, we can do all of that damage with one shot. And now we have perfect position on the four to make the four, hit his cluster, and still take care of that shot down there. And now we have a makeable three and a makeable seven. But this is what runs racks, okay? Not 50 ways that a cue ball goes into an object ball but how you run out when you can put balls in the pocket. This is the kind of thing. I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't remind you that sometimes the balls that are blocking the pocket might be yours. Here we have a situation where we wanna play the five here if we can, but whether we play it here or up there, these balls are in our way. We need to take care of this. This is a standard cluster break. It's not just unblocking a pocket. Sometimes you're unblocking pockets that aren't quite blocked. They're just blocking our balls. So what do we do here? Well, if you watch the channel, you know about the most powerful angle in pool, which is this 45 degree shot here, which takes you so many places on the table if you know what to do with it. So if we play the three with high right hand English, we come off of this rail and this rail, head straight down here and create havoc for this. We're gonna mix these up in a way that we're going to have makeable shots instead of unmakeable shots. Because what we have here are three relatively unmakeable shots, unless you're Alex Pagulian and you're going to bank that five ball cross side and break these up, which I think most of you aren't. So here we're going to play high right. Come down here, break up the cluster. And now, Instead of having three shots that won't go in, we have three very makeable shots and we have a, a really legitimate chance of running out. Very rare occurrence that I end the game that I lost because somebody blocked a pocket. I'm clearing them up. So you can block pockets on advanced players all you want. They're probably going to clear them up. I know in your APA four against four games, a block pocket is like a W because nobody gets the ball out of the way. I don't want you guys playing like that. You should be always thinking about how am I going to get my ball in that pocket, not where am I going to bank that ball, because that is a loser mentality. What you want to do is take control of the situation and not hope that something happens later on, like your opponent decides to shoot the ball in. Here is one of the easiest and most useful ways to unblock a pocket and that's simply to shoot a two for one. We're on the solids here, and our opponent has his ball blocked. We have a straight line into this pocket where if we just shoot a rolling ball on the two, it will go in the pocket. But in order to make this work, we want to get really straight on this shot. If we shoot it from over here, it almost never will follow that ball in. But if we can get relatively straight on it, we have a chance to play a two for one, which means that on this particular situation, we're gonna to have to draw back about 16 inches to get nice and straight on that two ball. So we shoot our draw shot. And now we have a straight line just about on this two and the nine. Here's the key for your two for one. You don't wanna hit the edge of the pocket. If the object ball that you're going through is on the edge of the pocket. You still want to head towards the center of the pocket. Hit most of the ball that you can, as much of the ball as you can, and that will give you the best opportunity to make the shot. Also, if you put a little bit of draw on it, you can transfer some topspin to the two ball 
that will allow it to follow, but you want to hit this as straight into the pocket as you can. I'm going to use the draw to help it follow because I also want to get on the eight with a little bit easier shot. So the shot looks like this. And just like that, we're on the eight. We made both balls. We're going to be out at the minimum. We have a pretty good chance of being out. Remember America's favorite scratch shot? This is the big sister of that shot. We are blocked by the 14 in our favorite corner pocket. How do we clear that up from here? Well, if we can get over here, the tangent line on these balls leads straight down the table, slightly missing the 14, but we're gonna fix that. All we need to do to get that angle that we want though, is to get on this side of this cluster and we have plenty of ammunition that allows us to do it. So I'm gonna use the three ball, just cheat this pocket a little bit and force the cue ball down the table. So now we have a perfect angle to play the two in the side and send the seven down the table. Here's the key. Some people are shooting this and the seven ball runs into the one, the 14 still on the table, okay? <laughs> the reason is the tangent line just barely misses. It might not even hit the 14. How do you make sure it hits the 14? We're going to shoot this with a little bit of draw. We will put top spin on the seven ball, taking it closer to the rail. And if we shoot it with a nice speed, we will either make the seven and the 14 or leave the seven in the pocket, which is also a bonus. So we shoot a little bit of draw on this. We want to stay on this four ball because we're not sure exactly what's going to happen down there. Nice slow speed because we want our balls to be close to the pocket. Solved our problem. Just about all of you, well a lot of you, are out from here. Very simple fix. The moral of the story is when you see clusters, see where that tangent line takes you. If you shoot it in or even play a safety off of it, where is it going to send that second ball? From what we saw here, you now have hundreds of different scenarios that you can solve if you use these different things and piece them together where they're needed. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Check out this next video. Don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, this is the kind of stuff you're missing. And I know you learned something today. So have a great day. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Talk to you soon.